$5 Games presents Balloons TD6. This is not just a tower defense game of monkeys popping balloons. This game is designed to give you hours and hours of the breast of the best strategy gaming available. And it's also available on your phone. Don't you have a phone? You can play it anywhere. Normally speaking, it's only twice as expensive on Steam rather than mobile, but at the moment, it's actually over four times the price. The most reasonable explanation I have for this is that fewer microtransactions happen on Steam rather than mobile. But considering that I don't have proof of that happening, then the next reasonable assumption is that the developers know that that people are willing to pay more for a project on Steam than on mobile. And you'll notice that this mindset is geared more towards extracting as much funds as possible from the customers rather than the riskier approach of making new things or creating something innovative that the players may or may not want. As such, several strategies are employed to desensitize the players from the value of money such as making their long-term in-game currency resemble a dollar bill. Also, every time you run out of a resource or don't have enough XP to unlock something, there is a handy dandy purchase button in the shape of your wallet. And although it claims that it was designed to give you hours and hours of the best strategy gaming available, they're clearly lying. Or to put it politely, it's just marketing. To elaborate, each level has multiple difficulties with different modes in each difficulty. Across these four levels, I was able to use the same strategy over 30 times, and I don't see a reason to change it. And the strategy I made isn't exclusive. There's a lot of them that will work. You could say that this incentivizes the player to try out new things things because if you're just trying to beat everything like me, well, the main core of the game got boring pretty quick. On the side though, there are challenges which are more interesting. They introduce heroes, have unique restrictions, provide a unique level, or have multiplayer shenanigans. I actually learned the game while protecting Mr. Beast's yacht without using a hero, and that was actually a lot of fun. Some challenges have everything already unlocked for you and some don't and that just provides a very inconsistent experience. And although I really want to like the boss challenges, by the time I got to them, the game felt like it was screaming at me to either spend money or look up a strategy rather than figuring out what I did wrong. I keep being brought back to the microtransaction page and seeing the limited edition purchase that is currently three times the price of the game itself. But luckily on this page, there is a nice convenient excuse to justify a microtransaction. I've also noticed the fan on my computer running louder than normal while playing this game, specifically on this screen, which is the main hub. So I took a look at the task manager, and either this game is an unoptimized mess, or it's using my computer for cryptocurrency, because it was using 42.1% of my computer. Whereas, let's compare it to a relatively similar game. Let's say Devil May Cry 5. That uses a whopping 23.7%. And this isn't the main menu of Devil May Cry 5. This is gameplay of Devil May Cry 5. I guess these graphics really are just so phenomenal to warrant that much CPU. But to summarize my experience, I initially didn't like the game because this page was a mess and I was repeatedly brought to the microtransaction page while exploring and I hated that. 
then I began to enjoy it doing the challenges, and then I became incredibly bored when doing the main game. I didn't think I disliked this game that much until I was making this review. Maybe that's because I love the tower defense genre, so when I look over all of it, I kind of enjoyed it. But then I get into the details and I'm just bombarded with things that allude, hey, we want you to spend more money. Then again, it's an overwhelmingly positively rated game. So I'm probably going to be trampled under all of your guys' feet and not in the pleasurable way. So excuse me while I continue to dig my own hole. To quickly review the main gameplay, you have money, towers cost money, popping balloons gives you money. Each tower can upgrade all the way on one of three paths, each of which are phenomenally cool. Like the boat can become a freaking carrier with planes. The towers can also progress two levels along one of the other paths, giving each tower a total of six options. The reason to take a tower down one path rather than another is a combination between synergies and in order to tackle certain balloon properties. Like balloons coated in metal require fire to remove them, while others are actually blimps and require a lot more firepower. Learning this game and figuring these things out was a ton of fun, but there were a lot of things I had to look past that kind of made it not worth it. But anyways, consider picking this game up rather than popping a balloon.